Good evening everyone, hope you're all doing well tonight. I don't normally make videos this late, but here we are. So I've been getting a lot of questions about how do I do my colored pencil portraits? Well, one is about the materials I use, and then the other main question is how do I do it? So I'm going to address the first half of that statement and answer some questions about what materials I use. These are the main supplies that I use that I find to be helpful navigating the trickiness of colored pencils. So yeah, I'll show them to you. Alrighty, so the first thing I'm going to start off is the various pencils that I use. So I have the Prismacolor portrait set uh, in the pack of 24. This cost about $25. I also have the Prismacolor 72 set um, with assorted colors. And I would like to note that those both are the regular kind, not the Vera Thin. So they're the regular um, soft set pencils. I also have, and these are amazing pencils to work with, the 60 count. Faber-Castell colored pencils and these cost about $80 before tax and these are called the polychromos so let's look at what they look like come like that and then I will show you the Prismacolor portrait set so these look like that similar setup just like that the biggest difference between these two pencils between the Prismacolor and the Polychromo pencils is that the Prismacolor pencils are wax based pencils, the Polycolor Chromos are oil based pencils. So you're going to get more longevity out of these pencils than you will with these pencils. However, if you're learning to draw with colored pencils for the first time and want to practice at being a good artist, I don't recommend going straight into this product. Yes, it's going to pay off in the end if you buy it up front at the beginning because these are really nice pencils and really easy to work with. But if you want to learn how to get good at blending, I totally recommend this set just because there are a lot of tones that are similar to each other in shade and then you just learn how to build up color. Like a lot of creams and yellows and here is you have a lot of oranges and browns and pinks. And that way you can improve your skills in that manner. The next thing I want to talk about are different types of pencil sharpeners. So I have these right here. These two are my absolute favorite pencil sharpeners. They're by the brand Coom. I don't know if you all can see that. But Coom. These you can get at like Hobby Lobby. They're the cheapest. I think I only paid like a dollar for this, maybe two for that. But they're cheap they feel really heavy and the blades are made of magnesium which supposedly these types of blades since they're made of that type of metal they're not supposed to wear down as easily which i think that's true because all my pencils get a great point out of this and i mean really good my pencils have to be at least this sharp at all times and that is because the sharper the pencils are the more control you're going to get with the drawing. If you let it dull, then you're not going to have as much control over it. You also get kinds like these two that hold eraser shavings. Now this is just like a cheap one and it does the job, but it's not as good as my two Coom pencil sharpeners. Next thing I want to talk about is erasers and I have three different types of erasers. So I have like a stick eraser, this kneaded eraser, and then this little eraser pencil. This is also made by Faber-Castell. Um, you can get these at Hobby Lobby. I don't remember how much I paid for these. I want to say maybe like five or six dollars for a pack of two, but these are super nice and just super high quality and you can get the eraser down to a pretty fine point. The kneaded one's super nice. I don't remember which brand this one is, but it's always good to have a kneaded eraser. Also doesn't leave eraser shavings with this one, so that's nice. This one surprised me out of all of them, so I actually got this eraser in a pack of 50 pencils that came with this. And I used it and I really like it. It's really good for erasing big spaces and it seems to do the job and get it all the way through. 
Also, it doesn't leave that many eraser shavings behind and it's really high quality. It doesn't really rip the paper. It, actually, it doesn't rip the paper. I've never had a paper rip on me when using these, but now since I said it, it's probably gonna happen. Now on to paper. I use Canson Mixed Media for almost all my projects. It looks like this. You can get this type of uh, paper in various sizes. I like mixed media because I do kind of a little bit of painting within my colored pencil portraits, but it's not really painting, but it's important to have a mixed media paper that can take paint with your colored pencil portraits and I'll explain why in just a second. Another type of paper that I use is tracing paper. It looks like this, this one's very dirty, but you can see through this one pretty easily. I don't have more with me, but it comes in like a booklet and you just tear it out as you need. You can also use a blank piece of computer paper and what that does is it prevents your hands oils from transferring onto your drawing or from any of your drawings smudging anywhere else. It keeps it kind of concentrated. I like to have a scrap piece of paper on standby when I'm doing my colored pencil portraits because if I need to test a particular color, I can go ahead and do it on the scrap piece of paper and not on my drawing and this helps keep my drawings pretty clean. I have two pencil extenders. These are lifesavers and have improved the longevity of my colored pencils. I'm not joking, this one is only this long, very tiny. I got this one from Amazon for a pack of five for like two dollars maybe. And then this one is by DuRent, um, got this from Hobby Lobby, it was expensive. But this one's a twist one, you twist it out, and then you just twist it back into place. I also recommend an X-Acto knife because surprisingly, when you do portraits, you're going to need a lot of cutting. And also, this can be used for several different things. If you have a stain on your paper from the colored pencil, you can actually kind of shave this off very carefully. Also. The X-Acto knife creates really cool effects whenever you're doing hair, like very light highlights and flyaways, and so if you're looking for that effect, this is a really useful tool for that. Also gloves, so I like to put this on my non-dominant, non-drawing hand, and that's because when I go to move the paper around, my oils from my hand are not transferring onto the paper. And then, also as well, I recommend a cotton glove or anything soft because if you use like a rubber or nitrile glove, it can get stuck to the paper and then you could bend the paper, or rip it or fold it. And that would not be a good outcome. Jelly roll pens, super nice if you wanna create those um, highlights, especially that highlight in the eye. If you wanna get like a really bright one, these do the trick really well. Something super important that I'm gonna dive into a little bit more are these, so. Odorless paint thinner and odorless mineral spirits. You gotta be careful with these. Even though they are odorless, it's not good to breathe them in. And they do have a slight bit of an odor. If you're under 18, make sure you have your parents permission to do this or parent supervision because this can be dangerous to work with as it is flammable and again, not good to breathe in. But then I will explain in just a second how I use this. I use a, <laughs> this is kind of funny. I use a cheap mini makeup brush to wipe away all the shavings from my drawing without having to run my hand across the paper. And then I also use a cotton pad to um, reduce the waxiness of the portrait as well. So now I'm going to explain how I use the paint thinner for my drawings. Alrighty, so here I have the swatch samples. I use two very similar colors, one from the Prismacolors and the other from the Polychromo set and did a swatch on those and then one without the thinner and one with thinner. So the one without thinner, as you can see, there's still a little bit of patchiness. You can see the texture of the paper. Um, you really can't get the texture to go away unless you press down super hard and that's something you generally don't want to do when drawing because then you destroy the tooth of the paper the paper is now, it now has like an indentation in it because of that. And it's just something not good for the paper. It is a technique, but when working with colored pencils, it's generally not recommended as it can create um, some complications when trying to work with the colored pencils or with blending or anything like that. 
So as you can see with the thinner, you get a much more rich color. Again, I didn't try super hard, so it's not super good, but as you can see, the color is a lot more darker and a lot more concentrated and bold. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna paint over that really quickly because I did do a layer on top and then kind of wipe away the excess. And then kind of works like painting away. So it allows some of the wax and oil that's being built up by these pencils to be removed as I'm doing that. And as you can see, there's a huge difference. So this is the polychromos. This is the Prisma color ones. This is without the thinner and this is with the thinner. And then lastly, I'm gonna kind of show how this works with portraits. So take your scrap piece of paper again and then you kind of want to blot this off too because it does kind of stain the brush a little bit. So just make sure you have all that excess blotted off before you go and start blending again. So I want to blend right here in this cheek region. All the wax has been built up and I can't really blend it out much more. I like to use a square brush because you can really cut in some edges while also being soft. So I'm gonna dip into my cup of paint thinner, kind of wipe off the excess. You don't want too much because then it becomes really hard to work with. Always start with a small amount and then build your way up. And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of brush it. And then dragging from the outside inward. And you can already see like that has created so much smoothness. And you always wanna blend in the direction, like in the movement of the shape. And what I mean is, so I'm dragging from the outside in. You really don't wanna drag on the outside. Say you're someone that likes to work on the hair first. I particularly don't, but some people do. And you drag out and you're starting on the face and you drag outside. Well, this is what happens. It starts to drag outside of the picture. And you see right around here, and even up here, it can get up into the hair and could ruin your picture, and that's something we don't want. So you just want to make sure that you're following those lines and keeping everything smooth and blended. And this is what happens when you put too much on. You get kind of this spot right here. Now if you leave it alone it shouldn't do much but if you try and wipe it off it'll just make things worse. But as you can see it's really useful for blending things out. It also is lifting up that wax layer so when it's done drying you can go and put more color into this and then work it as you'd like. It's also very important too that you wait for this to dry before applying any more into this. And this is so you actually um, don't ruin any of your pencils, especially with the polychromos because the ends, the way, since it's oil-based and since oil-based paints react with paint thinner, the oil in this will react with the paint thinner and then you could damage the end of your pencil and waste even more money out of this pencil. Alrighty guys, so those were the materials that I use on a regular basis whenever doing colored pencil portraits, and I hope you found them super helpful. If you have any questions about them, ask me and I would love to answer any questions that you may have. I want to make a part two to this video talking about the techniques that I use for drawing with colored pencils. Now I went into a little bit with one of them with using the paint thinner and how all that works, but I didn't explain everything fully and I wanted to, but there just isn't enough time in this video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And if you'd like for me to do more videos like this, I would be glad to do so. Have a wonderful night.